So welcome all to the fifth day of this uh, session. We are at module five, implications of the holistic understanding. Uh, we are going to take a look at professional ethics or ethics in general. Uh, and in particular professional ethics. So <clears throat> we'll go into the contents of module five. It contains six lectures and three tutorials or practice sessions. So you can see those uh, uh, six lectures. We are going to go into very, these six lectures very briefly and also talk about the practice sessions very, very briefly. So when we look at professional ethics, it has to do with the principles, the guidelines, rules, norms, etc. about how to interact in the profession with all the stakeholders. So they may be human beings and they may be you know, other units in the rest of nature. So professional ethics has to do with how we go about this. But it depends on this, how we interact depends upon our character. And that also depends on our thought. So there are words like morality and ethics that are used. They have to do with the basic guidelines on how to interact with the world outside. The thought of how to interact with the world outside. So guidelines and thought about how to interact, they fall in that category. But as we have seen, this also depends on the uh, values that we have either seen understood or assumed and these values also depend on our world vision which we have discussed that if we have a holistic world vision and we have a clear understanding about the nature about the whole existence then we are able to decide our values our role our participation in one way on the other hand, if we are unable to do uh, that first part and our world vision is, is uh, some sort of preconditioning, then our values that we assume may be very different. So broadly, we have in the first four modules uh, covered about this part, the world vision and the values part. Now we are going to talk a little bit about the other uh, parts uh, of this. So, uh, any immediate uh, uh, question that comes to mind, uh, let's take that. I mean, we are shifting very, you know, uh, shifting the gears from what you were discussing till now, till uh, this previous session, even till the end of the break. So, if there are any immediate questions uh, i can we can take one or two okay so far we have discussed that there is a possibility of development of a human being a holistic development and basically the core of it has to do with developing from a self living at the level of uh, selecting, tasting, uh, at the level of, uh, you know, this desire, thought and expectation, at the level of imagination. And therefore, this imagination is driven by sources outside, preconditioning and sensation. And part of it is also driven by your natural acceptance but that portion may be very small. And if we are able to develop this upper block, uh, we are able to 
discover our natural acceptance and then our imagination is guided by that understanding that right understanding that right understanding basically means that i have a, a clarity about my participation in the larger order i have clear about relationship my responsibility in relationship i am clear about the harmony in nature and my participation in that also and ultimately i am clear about the coexistence the way i mean the last uh, lecture was about that so if i am clear about these things and these are not in thought not at this level but i have directly been able to observe this so if i have an understanding of harmony that is all this is awakened then my feeling is one of relationship one of mutual fulfillment one of responsibility and then i think about how to be mutually fulfilling how to fulfill my responsibility as a human being and then my behavior my work and my participation will be what we can term ethical ethical means that it is going to lead to mutual fulfillment and at the bottom i put this it leads to mutual happiness in the case of human being when we are interacting with human being it leads to mutual happiness and in the case of interacting with the rest of nature it leads to prosperity for the human being and preservation of the rest of nature so those are the outcomes of ethical behavior work and participation and if one is awakened to all this possibility to the full human potential then uh, the enforcement from outside is very limited it is based on self discipline complementarity and so on and there would be a code of conduct which you can call human or human constitution so that would be the uh, way in which uh, this ethical behavior would materialize and on the other hand if uh, we start with you know without this block opened up the preconditioning predominantly is one of conflict one of uh, opposition feeling is one of opposition competition and so on predominantly the thoughts are mixed many times the thoughts are how to maximize my gains and so on so the behavior the work and the participation is quite indefinite so for enforcing this kind of ethical behavior and so on a lot of enforcement has to be done through some kind of externally enforced discipline uh, by punishment or reward uh, and whole lot of code of conduct oaths whistle blowing and all these kind of things they are undertaken and of course the outcome is also mixed so if i take very broadly the approach that is being taken in lectures 23 to 28 is the approach uh, that is described on the left hand side so let's see this is a lot to uh, cover you know in a, a short lecture so what i would recommend is that you can go to the recordings of these lectures and take a look at those but if you have any quick questions about this slide i'm happy to take that yeah there's a question in the chat uh, are the professional ethics universally same in all countries cultures and societies it's a good question see the moment you come down from this level from the level of understanding and the level of feeling or the values this part can be uh, 
universal is universal your natural acceptance is universal but the moment you come below that the moment you come to block b2 it is going to be it's bound to be different so for example if i take a very simple example you want to nurture your body okay then how do you go about doing that whether to eat rice or to eat uh, wheat uh, will be different so some people will have this uh, growing in their region something will some people will have something else growing in their region so they will have you know different uh, but their goal if they have the right understanding would be the same to nurture their body and if we expand that this part this uh, values and values part would be the same okay yeah so let's see if there are any other questions Yeah, we have two hands raised, uh, uh, Professor Nachiketa. Uh, uh, Rajul ji, namaskar. Namaste, namaste. Uh, ye jo uh, sir is in the, in the thought that is mixed and in the outcome mixed. Uh, what does it mean? It it means a little amount of mutual happiness will be still there, prosperity in human being and preservation of rest of nature. Will uh, will uh, some amount of that will also be there in the mixed outcomes? Yes, yes, of course. You oh. can see so many people. You know, they are so much uh, concerned about uh, all these things, and there are others who are uh, very happy to exploit things. <laughs> so uh, there will be a mixture of uh, outcomes. Okay. Yeah. Minu Mehta ji. जी भैया भैया आई वाज वंडरिंग इफ वी लुक एट अवर प्रेजेंट सिस्टम भैया देन सो मेनी प्रोफेशंस वेदर इट इज द आर्म्ड फोर्सेस द लीगल मशीनरी इवन पार्लियामेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑल दिस बिलोंग्स टू एनफोर्समेंट ओनली नो भैया या सो टुडे देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम दैट इज ट्रू एंड द प्रॉब्लम इज Uh, going to continue until we shift to the left hand side and the vehicle to do that would be the right kind of education the education uh, and sanskar which ensures this holistic development so bhaiya my question is that in the absence of all these enforcement agencies Uh, then bhaiya there will be no countries isn't it no need for any government all of us live the way we need to live no, there will be still geographical boundaries there will still be uh, different languages there will still be different uh, you know all these differences will still be there but Ji. the shift will be to complementarity rather than uh, domination Ji. and exploitation so that shift will be there ji bhaiya thank you and that is uh, you know a possibility it is not the, uh, because i am saying it it will happen there a lot of work has to be done and if that work is done then it will happen if it is not done then you can see what things where things are going so uh, it's a possibility ji ji bhi and as uh, you discussed in the last um, last session uh, last session the bulk of the existence is in coexistence it is not in chaos or har uh, disharmony so only uh, the problem is with the uh, self of the human being and there is a choice that the human being has so if if we take the right choice and work on it it will take time to develop if we don't take that choice it will take more time but ultimately we'll reach there somewhere or the, sometime or the other in you know 100 years or 10000 years it depends on how much effort we make 
isn't it? Jibia. Yeah. Yeah, of course, the possibility is a desirable possibility. You have to look into it. And as uh, faculty members, as teachers, uh, there is a whole lot uh, of responsibility on teachers by choice, isn't it? Anji bhaiya, ji. Nice. So we'll go to Nachiketa Kumari ji. I've already asked the question. Oh, oh sorry, they uh, forgot to uh, uh, lower your hand. Yeah? Okay. Uh, Dr. Geeta? Bhaiya, namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, namaste. Uh, Bhaiya, I have a doubt whether it is right to use the word enforcement, Bhaiya, uh, because uh, we have seen that all human beings are similar and we, have, we are complementary to each other. In that you case, can, is it... You, you can use some other word that is the issue is how do you make sure that uh, uh, it is communicated and uh, there is a for example if you are going to run a class mm. right there has to be some timetable for it isn't mm -hmm. it you mm -hmm. can't say that i'll come at nine o'clock somebody else will say i'll come at uh, 10 o'clock somebody will come mm. at 12 o'clock mm. there has to be some agreement Mm. So that is what, uh, you know, we can call it enforcement or agreement or whatever you want to call it. It's okay. But the idea is that uh, <clears throat> on the left hand side, it is self uh, discipline. It is not enforced from outside. It is mm. from within. Mm. Whereas on the right hand side, a very large part of it has to be done from outside. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, there is nobody who is uh, not self-motivated and self-disciplined. The interesting thing is that each, every one of us has this natural acceptance to be in relationship, to live in harmony and coexistence. Mm -hmm. So we, and that is something which doesn't go away. You know, it is not uh, something that uh, uh, that natural acceptance is there. Mm. It's not corrupted. Mm. All we have to do is to draw our own attention to it, start referring to it. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's all. So education has a major role to play in, you know, this developing the character. Mm. Uh, I got your point, Bhaiya. Anyway, uh, it is my suggestion, Bhaiya. Uh, sometimes words play an important role here. So I find uh, enforcement uh, doesn't fit here. Uh, we have discussed this, uh, this word things we have discussed many times, but let's see. It's some other word you can suggest, we can you know, use that and you can use it. Isn't it? Mm, okay, sure. Pay that. But you, I hope you got the idea that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got the idea, but yeah, still, I find enforcement okay. doesn't fit it right here. Yeah. So go with the meaning of the what is intended, and not get stuck with the word. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And thank you, thank we, you. from on our part, also we'll take a look at you know some better word and use that. Okay. okay, nice. So this module five is a description of uh, what is written on the left hand side over here, that once um, we are either developed to this point or are in the process of developing to this side, what uh, this ethics would look like. So let me ask you, where do you think the major effort should be? Uh, should the major effort be on developing this world vision and the values, or should the major effort be on working on these things which are below that? Morality, ethics, character, and so on. So you can put your 
response in the chat. Yeah. So Dr. Chandrasekhar, is it who is writing? It should be below. Below means morality and ethics and so on. Okay. So those who think that it should be below, let us uh, you know discuss that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like quite a big mix of people who are thinking that uh, we should focus our education and our efforts uh, over here uh, in all of these things. So let me clarify my question that where do you think the major effort should be on one or on two? Can I answer? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, our major effort. I think my, are... my question was not clear, but anyway, now uh, yeah, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. My, our emphasis should be more on the world vision based on understanding because uh, all other things will fall into place if we have got a right understanding and we have got a uh, larger perspective, then automatically with that, the values, morality, ethics, character, all these things will fall into place because they will be based upon our that world vision or that understanding. That is what I think. Yeah, very true. That's the approach that uh, we are taking. And uh, let me ask uh, somebody else to comment about, and you can also put it in the chat, that today, where is the major effort? On one or two? Yeah. So many of you are saying that it is two. Okay. Yeah, so good. So this is... Um, uh, yeah, and to acquire physical facility. <laughs> if you are in two or if you are in on the right hand side, then the major focus will be on physical facility and sensation and all those kind of things, isn't it? Okay. Dr. Bhubaneshwari. Yeah, Dr. Bhuvaneshwari, do you have a observation? Dr. Seema Patel is saying that I think in none today, neither of this. Very interesting. Okay, Dr. Bhuvaneshwari, yes. Yeah, Dr. Karnakaran is writing how norms are feasible in professional code of conduct since they are unwritten. So we have to write them. We have to see. You know. At the end of it, I'll mention three things that uh, would be fruitful to do from this. Number one is this norms and all that, what you're calling norms or professional code. At the level of all these feeling, thought and so on. So write a human constitution, write a code of conduct or norms which uh, uh, you know, are developed with this right understanding. The second thing is that when we are actually interacting with the rest of nature, then what would be the guidelines? And similarly, when we are interacting with other human beings, what would be the guidelines? So those things have to be put in, uh, put in word. Just doing the second part, it will not work. So the self has to be developed, or at least in the process of development, 
then these things will be helpful. Without that, we can see where we are. Okay. So this module five is essentially talking about, uh, uh, you know, beyond what has been discussed in board modules one and four. It is talking about the principles and guidelines for ethical human conduct of a person who is, or of people who have the right understanding. And then what would be their behavior, their work, their participation. So module five is talking about these, these things. Okay. So as I mentioned, you can go through the recordings of all these lectures. There are the YouTube recordings and we'll uh, request Parikshit ji or RP Singh ji to uh, put this link in the chat so that you can have it. And very briefly to mention practice sessions, uh, there are three major topics for the practice sessions. First one is uh, human constitution or you can call it, uh, you know, what the code of conduct would be, what the uh, um, way of living would be. So whether it is at the level of the family or the apartment building or whatever at that level or at your college level or at your department of the college level or whether it is in a business or an industry at whatever level it would apply, you know, you may call it different names at different levels, but overall, uh, you know, doing this uh, would be a one practice session. Another practice session would be on the guide, developing the guidelines for technology, how it can be nature friendly and also human friendly. And the third would be the guidelines for management systems. So I would close with that.